Okay, first up this morning, uh, once again there are calls for consistent clothing sizes to be introduced in Australia. After new figures revealed more than 60% of us have mixed sizes in the wardrobe and are sick of not knowing what's what. Joe Kellock is the Executive Director of the Council of Textile and Fashion Industries of Australia and she joins us now from Melbourne. Joe, good morning to you. Good morning, I'm Carly. Good morning, Larry. Uh, thanks for joining us. Do we actually have a national standard for clothing sizes at all? We do have a current standard, but it's out of date. It was last. It was taken from data um, captured in a self-reported survey in the 1970s, and um, it was last updated in 97. So we know that anecdotally, it can be out up to two sizes. Okay, so yeah, essentially size 10 in one shop could be size 14 in another shop. We've all been there, all done that. Uh, is there nothing we can do about it? Um, yes, we can. There's a lot we can do. First of all, we need to capture some measurements and profile the Australian population so that we've actually got some scientific data to base a standard on. Currently, we actually don't know where the averages are. All right, now, it's obviously the same for men's and women's clothing. I know I can, uh, a pair of jeans will fit me in one store and the same size in another won't work. So uh, men are suffering the fashion, this fashion thing as well. Yes, they are at the moment, and that's quite interesting that you should say that, Larry, because men used to buy on a measurement and, and they didn't have such a big problem. But now we're seeing the small, medium and large and representational sizing creeping into the men's area as well, and, and they're having equal difficulty as the women are. Okay. Um, Sorry, keep going. Uh, once upon a time, I was just going to make the point that once upon a time uh, we used to shop and we'd walk into stores and the clothing would be merchandised on sizing. Um, however, today when we walk into stores, you'll see the merchandisers with colour and you might flick through four red shirts, for instance, to see if it has your size and for, only to discover that it isn't. So the shopping experience has changed for the consumer in that time and become more difficult, I might add. Mm. Jo, what effect is it having on shoppers? What are consumers telling you? What feedback do you get? Well, the LookSmart survey that's just been conducted with 1,800 respondents, they, they um, uh, in their survey, asked the question to their customers about how they feel about shopping. And it was close to 50% of those customers indicated that they were frustrated, that uh, the search of clo for clothing had become difficult, um, that in some instances uh, it was having an impact on the way they feel and it, in this area it also draws in the issue of body image and how um, some of our young people are attaching themselves to clothing label. What are the first experiences of young girls when they go shopping and they're looking for clothing? Do they say, oh, this sizing's not right or do they say, oh, there must be something wrong with my body because I don't fit this size range? And that's our concern. Yeah, well, more than 50% of shoppers are unhappy, so no wonder you're calling for an accurate national sizing standard. How, how would that work? Well, we believe that the first thing that needs to be done is we need to have a scientific survey that captures the profile of the Australian population. That means with bus waist and hip measurements and a whole range of other measurements that product developers in clothing need to be able to conduct accurate sizes and what they call a base size and a size range. But we also believe that Australia needs to know what its population looks like. We have a multicultural society and if we're going to be a nation of innovators and product developers, which we're being encouraged to be, then we need to be able to profile the... It's not just clothing, it's, it's um, aerospace, it's aircraft, it's defence, it's health. We use data about the population for all sorts of reasons. Jo, so moving, jo moving forward, would the size 8, 10, 12, 14 still work or is there room for you know, to start the, the slate clean and come up with a different way? Much like men in pants, you know, size 30, 32, 34, does the whole thing need to be relooked? Yes, it does, and I believe that we need to go back to the measurement. If yeah. you use a, a physical measurement, there's no misrepresentation about that. So people could call it what they like, but as long as the measurement is there, and at the end of the day, it's about the, the sizing is just an indicator of where to find the garment that fits you. So it's all about the search for clothing and to make it easier. And as an industry, we need to address the issue and make it easier for the consumer to find the garments that they're looking for.
Okay, thank you so much for your time this morning. It's an issue which My does pleasure. affect us all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, John.